Hey, how's it going? I'm Max on the Tech Tutor, and in this lesson we are going to learn how to add images to HTML documents and also how to write and format text in them. In other words, we are now going to work on the content on our site. I've already prepared some images in Photoshop that I'm going to use. If you don't know how to use Photoshop yet, go look up some tutorials or just pick some random photos from Google for testing purposes. If you are going to work with web development, you should really know how to use Photoshop though. It is key if you want to create good looking websites. But as for now, I'm only going to teach you the technical part of creating websites. Before we start coding, I'm going to show you what my final product is going to look like. So you can get an idea of how I think while making it. So let's go ahead and look at that. The site I'm making is going to be for a made-up music studio called Clear Sound Studio. This is the sketch I made, and as you can see, the start page here consists of images and some text down there. There is also a menu over here, which I'm going to make by creating individual images for each menu item. So one image with the text studio equipment, one with the text rent it, etc. And then I'm going to make each of those images clickable. So let's go ahead and fill our page with images and text. Hopefully you remember the basic HTML code you always need in a HTML document in order for it to work, the code I've got open right here. And if you don't remember it, go ahead and watch my video, the skeleton of a HTML5 document, right now. On the top of my page, I'm going to put what is called a header, which simply is a wide image that spans across the width of the entire web page and most often contains the logo of the company or organization the site belongs to. I've got my header in the same folder, folder as my index.html, and my header looks like this. And let's go ahead and take a look at the dimensions of this image. And as you can see, they are 1000 times 200 pixels. That is the size of this image, and that is exactly as large as it's going to be displayed in the web browser. Unless you use CSS to change the size. But that is something we are going to go into later. For now, make sure you have your header and all of your other images in the exact size as you want them to be. And another thing that is good to know is use the JPEG file format for your images that you are going to use for the web. It, because it is the most effective image format for the web. It's fast to load for the clients that are looking at your page. And uh, the quality is pretty decent. So now I'm going to write the code in the body tag to make this header show up on the top of the page when I open up my index.html in a web browser. So what I do is write img src equals header.jpg and the img stands for image and src is source and what I put in between the quotation marks here is the source of the image. It's the file path and the name of the image. The file path is where the image is located relative to the HTML file it is being called from. I'll show you later more about that. So let's look at this in the web browser. I just saved it and now I'm opening it up and it looks like this perfect just as we want it and as you can see here I've got quite a bunch of files here for my site and it can get quite messy easily so a good idea is to sort your content into folders and therefore I'm going to create a new folder called images and guess what I'm gonna put my images in there all of these and all of these 
So now I only have my index.html and my images folder. Now that means I am going to have to change a bit of, or my, I mean add a bit of code here because I have changed the file path for this image. It's no longer in the same folder as the index.html file. As you can see, I moved it inside a folder called images. There it is. And that means that I have to write images slash header.jpg because if you are here in the folder where the index.html file is, then you have to go inside the images folder and then you find the header file. And that is why you have to write it like that. So let's make sure that it still works. And it does. And if I remove this, let's do it to sh just show you what happens. It doesn't really work. So let's add it back there again. And another thing I can do with an I IMG tag or image tag is add what is called alternative text. And that is the text that shows up when you hover your mouse over an image, or it is the text that is displayed on the screen on ancient devices that cannot display images, like really, really old cell phones. Another reason to add alternative text is because it will help you climb search results on Google if you enter words there that are related to your site and the subject of your site. These are words that are called keywords. So if I add an alternative text here, it's going to look like this. I write alt for a alternative and then I'm going to type clear sound, clear sound studio um, the central Let's see, Central Music Studio for everyone. And as you remember from the header, it only says Clear Sound Studio. So why did I add all of this? I did it because these are some of these contain some of the keywords for my site. Some words that I think are important and that people will search for on Google when they are looking for a, uh, a music studio. I mean, if they want a central music studio, then that is obviously what they are going to search for. And now that I have added this, it is going to increase my Google ranking for searches containing those words. So now I'm done with the first image, great. Now I'm going to add all of the menu buttons. Just like I did with the header, but now, now I'm not going to enter any alternative text uh, in those tags, because the buttons themselves don't really contain in any information. So now I have added all of the buttons, let's take a look at it in the web browser. Mm. As you can see here, this button pff, goes all the way over there by its own, but it is actually supposed to be in line with these. And what I have to do then is to create what is called a div tag. And that looks like this. A div tag creates like a box. Um, so all of these will be in contained within a box, meaning that they will stick together like this. And I'll explain more about divs uh, in an upcoming lesson. I'll show you some more examples. So don't worry about that right now. Just know that if you put a bunch of stuff inside a div, they will go inside a common, an invisible box. Alright, so now we have all of the buttons and the header. But as you can see, 
nothing really happens with the sides. I want the buttons to look a bit different when I hover my mouse over them like this. I want them to change the, their appearance. And that is why I have two different sets of um, buttons over here actually. Uh, I have one set that looks like this. They have r a red little ribbon on the top and then I have the ones that are that end with hover that have a more greenish sort of ribbon on them. So what I want to happen is that when I hover my mouse over a button on the side here this red ribbon is going to change color and that's it. So now I'm going to write the code that displays the second version of a button and then it is also going to go back to the red version after I remove my mouse from it. So this is the code. Okay, so that was a bit of code. I'll show you how it works first and then I'll explain it to you. As you can see, the ribbons change color when I move my mouse over them. Amazing! <laughs> Alright, so that is exactly what we want. So now I'll go ahead and explain what I just wrote. So, first we have the original source. Let's first we're looking at the equipment button over here. That's this one. So the first original source is slash is images slash equipment.jpg. And then when I move my mouse over it, the source of this, as you can see here, is going to be changed to equipment hover.jpg. So it is going to be changed from this to this and that is exactly what happens and on the mouse out which means when I move my mouse away from it the source of this image is going to be changed back to the original source as you can see these two are identical and it is the same principle for all of these And do notice that I use both single quotes and double quotes over here. Let's look at this for an example. There are double quotes for the entire um, command here except for the on the mouse over part. And then there are single quotes for the whole file path part. Alright. So right now these buttons don't really do much. As you can see, when I click them, I'm clicking them, nothing happens. Not that fun. But I'm going to show you in an upcoming lesson how to make them useful. Ve coming very soon. The next thing I'm going to do is add two more images. And the procedure is exactly as before. And now I have added those images as well, and it looks like this. Alright. So now you hopefully understand how to add images to your site. Next up is adding and formatting text. I'm going to put a heading below this image, and the way you do this is with the tag that is called the header tag and the header tag looks like this first you have an angle bracket and then you have age and then you can pick any number from 1 to 6 so age 1, age 2, age 3, age 4, age 5 or age 6 let's go with age 1 um, 
and the lower the number is, the larger the text is going to be. So h1 is the largest type of header and h6 is the smallest. So h1 and then as usual you close it off and I'm going to write the studio for everyone. And let's look at it. Alright, here it is. Now, as you notice in the web browser over here, the font that is used doesn't really fit with the rest of my page. Doesn't really blend in that well. And that is because we haven't done any styling with CSS yet. And this is my web browser's default font, the one that is used here on this text. I'll show you how to change fonts in my CSS series that is coming soon. So make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. I'll leave the font as it is now. You probably want to write just regular text too and not just headings and the tag you use for that is the P tag. Which P stands for paragraph. And it looks like this. I'm just gonna grab some random text here and put it in there. There we go, some just te test text and here we go, some smaller text beneath a large header. Perfect. Okay, so what else can you do with text in paragraphs? I'll show you the most common ones. You can make words bold by putting them inside a B tag like this as you can see this text here got bold a bit thicker than the rest of the text and another tag that you can use is the italic tag and I'm just going to show you what it looks like I'm just putting it in some random place and here it is. As you can see, it's sort of slanted like that. Alright, and sometimes you may want to state a number of related things, and the, what you can do then is create lists. There are two types of lists, unordered lists and ordered lists. The ordered lists have dots next to every list element and numbered lists have increasing numbers next to them. The code for these lists look like this. Alright, and that is all of the code you need. The first part over here is the unordered list, UL, standing for unordered list, and here we have the ordered list, OL. And it looks like this. Alright, the unordered list with dots, and the ordered list with numbers. We have now finally gotten started adding content to our site. Awesome, right? In the next lesson, I'm going to teach you how to get your HTML document more organized and how to add more structure to it. If you enjoyed this lesson, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe. See you in the next one.